Okay, so in this video I'm going to show you Amazon Transcribe in action and what it's going to be doing is converting speech to text for a audio file or an audio file which has multiple speakers. In fact this file's got two speakers, one male, one female. So why this is revolutionary is that um, for years now traditional speech recognition technology has not been able to cope with audio that has more than one speaker. It's just typically been in single speaker audio only. So this has meant that transcribing meetings or interviews, um, boardroom meetings, round tables, etc. has really been fallen to the domain of the transcription services. So lots of people working from home, listening and physically typing audio and um, transcription businesses around the world um, have, have been doing that. But with the advent of Amazon Transcribe, this is really going to revolutionize the, the speech to text world. So I want to just show you a quick video, it's, it's about 1 minute 30 long, of an interview between Lee Sales, ABC journalist, and Bill Shorten. And I'm just going to run you through the process of how this is done within Amazon Transcribe. Now we uh, at Dictate Australia have set up a service to do this for you, so if you're not comfortable with using Amazon Transcribe yourself, you can speak to us, we can take your audio and we'll, we'll get it transcribed for you. So let me just show you how, the, how this works. So I'm logged into my, my AWS console in the, transcript, in the transcribe section. I'm just going to go ahead and create a transcribe job. So I can call this job anything. I'm going to call it Lee and Bill for Lee Sales and Bill Shorten. Um, now it's going to ask me for the input URL of the file. This is just where is my audio file kept. So on Amazon, if you keep audio on Amazon in storage, storage is called S3. I've already uploaded this file to my S3 bucket and I'll just get the URL for that link. So as you can see it was an MP3 file. He, um, there are a few different formats that can be accepted by Amazon Transcribe. M MP3, M4A, um, typical those kind of examples. The, the usual formats, the high quality audio formats that can be taken from, um, used by a, a, a high quality voice recorder for example. So I'll pop the link into my audio file, I specify the language, is this going to be Australian English? Um, sampling rate I'm going to leave but you, you, can, you can pop in the sampling rate of the input audio file if you know it. Um, a custom vocabulary, so I've actually created one called Lee and Bill. It, um, it looks like this, it's just a text file, it's got the word Lee in it. What I wanted, this, the point of the, the point of the custom vocabulary is if you're using or if you have words within your audio that is kind of specific to your industry, it may be some, me some medical terms, some legal terms, you'd put those words in a custom vocabulary for your speakers or for your company and then Amazon Transcribe will learn from that. So I've just popped in the word Lee um, because that's how Lee Sales spells her name. So I know that when Bill Shorten mentions the word Lee, I want to make sure that that's spelled correctly and hopefully you'll see that in the text when it comes out. So that, that's my custom vocabulary that I'm going to use, but just think of it as, as specific files for your, your industry. Channel identification is a way, if you have multi-channel audio input, so if you've got a, a fancy setup with multiple microphones, one microphone per person, so a good example of that is um, a, an in, a TV interview, you may see people with clip lapel mics, that would be a separate channel for, for each microphone. In my case, I've just ripped the audio straight from a, a video, so it's just a straight MP3 file, so I don't have multiple channels. But if I did, I could specify the option. Now, speaker identification, this is a really important one. So I do want to identify each speaker as they speak because I've got a male speaker, I've got a female speaker. Um, and then I'm going to specify how many speakers I've got in my audio, which is there's only two. As you can see, you can have a maximum of 10 speakers that are identified. So you could push audio through with a lot more speakers than 10, but, but pretty much 10 is the maximum that it can cope with to try and identify those unique speakers. So this becomes really important once your audio has been transcribed because you can then identify who says what within that within that. And then I want to choose the output location for where my text goes when it's been transcribed. So I'm just going to put it straight into my, my bucket or my cloud storage. So I can go ahead and create that job and it's, it's in progress now. Now you'll see very soon that the, um, the, the processing time for, for audio is very quick. Okay, and there it is. So you can see that the job was created at 11 minutes past 2 and it was finished um, just under two minutes later. So it's a, a just slightly over the actual audio time. The audio is about 1 minute 26. So 
and you can see this is now going to be available for me to download from Amazon for the next 89 days. But let's go ahead and have a look at the output of this so you can just see how what it's done and how accurate it is. So here's the here's the text dump of the transcription. So you'll see that it's it's um, it's tried to work out the um, punctuation. So there's full stops, there's um, some commas in there, etc. And as you can see, as I hover over each word, there's a confidence score. So this this gives you an idea of how confident Amazon is that it's got the word correctly transcribed. So you can see that most of the confidence scores are either 100 percent or usually in the high 90s. So the accuracy from voice to text for multiple speaker um, transcription using AWS Transcribe is really high. Just like any kind of transcription, um, you still need to proofread this. So someone's gonna have to go through this, proofread it, uh, make it look a little bit nicer, maybe add some formatting. But the proofreading time compared to the transcription time is gonna be way, way less. So if you're paying transcription types to, to, to convert your voice to text, Paying a proofreader to do the same is probably going to cut the cost by maybe a, a quarter or even a fifth. Um, the, the savings can be pretty huge. So that's the text that's been produced. Now let's look at the speaker identification. This is where I remember I switched on the option and said there were two speakers. So here you can see it's identified speaker zero, speaker one. Um, you could go through afterwards and you can assign, you can just rename speaker one to um, Lee Sales, speaker zero to Bill Shorten, or whoever the people are that are in your 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 interview. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the video and so you can see it and hear it, and then I'll follow through by just you can you can follow along and see um, just how accurate AWS transcribe was at converting that voice to text. So he goes. Oh, it won't have uh, a negative effect on economic growth. In fact, most of the mainstream modelling shows that our economy will continue to grow. But if you have firms that have to be shifting and making the transition to having lower carbon emissions, that may mean that they have less money to spend on other forms of investment. It may mean they have lower profits, so therefore they have less money to deliver in the form of company tax into government coffers. Those things could have a spin-off uh, impact onto the GDP numbers. The problem with what you're saying is that you assume that there's no cost to doing nothing. And there is. That's why Australians want real change at this election. They're sick of doing nothing. I don't assume that there's no cost to doing nothing. I accept your mm -hmm. position that there's a long-term benefit. What I'm asking you to do is to square with the voters about exactly what the short-term cost is of getting to that position. Well, my absolute conviction and belief is that if we don't change, then the cost will be far greater than any initial investments. But what now, is if you're the asking initial... Me, well, if you're asking me to specify what a particular company in a particular factory will have to do, I can't do that, nor could you, nor can the government. But isn't it, a, re isn't it no, a reasonable... No, no, let's be fair here, Lee, let's be fair. I'm not going to get caught up in this government game of gotcha when you've got to invent a number which you can't possibly. But if there's 250 companies caught by our safeguards mechanism, the same safeguard mechanism the current government applies to 120. OK, so there you have it. If you followed along with the text, with the um, along with the video, you can see it's really, really accurate. I'd probably say 98, 99% accurate um, for multi-speaker audio. So this really is revolutionary. Now, um, like I said at the beginning, if you're not happy with using AWS Transcribe, um, we at Dictate Australia are happy to do this for you. We're setting up a process where you can send us your audio files and we'll get it transcribed for you. And obviously we'll, um, we'll, we'll charge you for the, the cost of that, 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 the Amazon charge us. It's a pay-as-you-go model, so there's no upfront cost. You just pay for every transcription that you get done. So I hope that's useful. I hope you've seen some benefits in AWS Transcribe. And I hope now that when you come across an audio file that has multiple speakers that could go for a couple of minutes or a couple of hours, there is technology out there that can, that can help you now.